So you're able to hear me, right? Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So um, by Lord Krishna's grace, we are in the um, 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 Atma Samyama Yoga ha, Shasti, um, sorry, um, uh, sixth chapter. We are almost uh, seen up to shloka number uh, 31 in the last class. Mm. But just to recap the shloka 30, 31 and 32, which are very important um, from the Tattva Jnana uh, Upadesham, from the Atma, Atma Samyama Yoga is very important. And these are completely Advaita Purvaka uh, Upadesham. These particular ones, especially this, sorry, 29, 30 and 31. So, in the Advaita Sampradayam, there is one Mahavakyam called Tat Tvam Asi. There are three padas or three words in this. One is Tat Padam. Tat means that. Or you. Normally, it represents you. That which, which is you or from an individual context, which we call as sometimes Jivatma or from an I, personal identification of individual selves or, or from all the ones. But Tatpada really comes to that absolute self. The absolute self from where from individual starts the vicharam and then and understand and realizes that self. So that self, absolute self from an individual context, as we go, is called tat. Then tvam padartha is the from the Ishwara, because in all our in, uh, in our query, um, we hold on to that Bhagavan. As, as if Bhagavan is somewhere in another, like a G, Paramatma. We say Jivatma, and then he's, a, he's, he's also, he's a, from the Atma concept, everything is the same. But we know that he is um, Sarvagunaha, Sarvatma, Sarvabhutatma. Uh, so he's infinite, everything we, from a relative context again. So that is the uh, Tvampada, sorry, Tat Tvammasi. Tvampadartam is I. Tatpadartam is Paramatma. Sorry, sorry about that. So it is Tattvam Masi. The Tvampadartam U is what from the individual context. Sorry about that. I should have been careful. Um, Tvampadartha is from the individual context of the absolute self. Tvampadartam. And the Tattvadartam is the absolute Brahman or the same Paramatma. From a Ishwara's context, but then that's the absolute self from a universal context. And then Asi means you, that, that you are remaining, being, right? I am, when you say that am, is the Asi. Asi is, means being existent, true, Satyam. So what that Mahavakyam says is that you, as you are the, the Advaita Sakshat Karam, when it happens, or when that Aparoksha Jnanam happens, that particular Jivatma, as you are saying from the Absolute Self, and the Ishwara from the Ishwara's concept of the absolute self, both self are one but the same absolute, Asi. So in that, and then you will be able to appreciate it from Gita in these three verses. In the verse number 29, when we saw, where we said this particular Samadarshanaha. Samadarshanaha means the person who has got a vision of equanimity or equality that who has got a non-differentiated perception. It is not, that's not a vision. It's a complete perception. Not only a perception, it's a realization. And that he said, Sarva that is, that he says, hey, uh, hey um, uh, um, 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 Partha, uh, he said, uh, Yoga Yuktatma, this uh, Atma Samyama Yoga Yuktatma is Sarvatra uh, Samadarshana. In all that he has got that Samadarshanam, Atmanam, that he sees himself in everybody. Yikshate. And then Sarva Bhutani Cha Atmani. And he is also seeing the others in him. So he is stating from, this, from his own standpoint, that is a Tvampadartam. From a Tvampadartam, he is seeing himself in others and others in himself. Right? So that is the equal vision that he is getting. Or he is, he is um, a, a realized person. And in the verse number 30, we saw, Yomam Pashyati Sarvatra, Sarvam Chamai, this is all Bhagavan's words. Mind you, this is all Bhagavan's words. So in the uh, verse number 30, he is seeing the same Ishwara now in everybody and the same Ishwara in himself.
His sworn identity is gone. His sworn identity is gone. The only identity he sees even then is that Paramatma, even from the Ishura. From an Ishura's concept again, Bhagavan says, Yaha Maam Sarvatra Pashyati. He sees me, everything, everybody. So you see the subtle difference? It is the same vision. Only thing in the previous 29th shloka, he sees Atmanam. That is when he says the relative context of everything, whatever it is, absolute self, that absolute self he sees in everyone uh, from a his standpoint of view. In the verse number 30, he sees that Ishwara in everybody and the Ishwara in himself. And for that person, that's what I said in the last class when I said that particular Tasyaham na pranasyami tachame na pranasyati it's a bit of a uh, literal meaning is what it literally says is to him I am never um, pranasya pranasyati means destructive to him I don't become destructive nor he doesn't become destructive to me but that's a literal meaning we should not take it like that but what we say pranasyami here what Bhagavan wants to say, whenever in this world there is a loss, that is called nashyam or nashtam, we say, right? The nashtam loss comes to the, this dhatu called nashya. Nashtam means more loss. There is a gain, what you have got has got lost. Right? So, take that English word, beautiful. To him, I don't get lost or he don't get lost to me. Understand now? Very easy. So don't take it as a word nashyam as a destruction. But so that means what? What what gets lost in the world? Uh, only an object that gets lost, an object of perception gets lost. If you have gained, then you lost. Where there is no gain, there is no loss. Right? So that means anything we perceive in this object, that which comes, that has to go. That is a loss. So really what Bhagavan wants to say is Aham, Aham, that is me, Vasudeva, the Paramatma, Aham, that Paramatma, Vasudeva, does not become an object of perception. So Krishna says now to, to that yogi, I do not become an object of perception which normally gets lost. Any object of perception will have a lifetime, a time, a time limited factor. So I becomes an unlimited, of unlimited factor. That's it. It can't be an object. And also, he to me, there may means here Bhagavan he says, may saha he does not get lost. Meaning to say, he also does not become an object. Means what from an so that means what that ikem is. Very much here identified from an Ishwara's concept as well. He does not become an object of perception to me. Meaning to say, I said, he does not get away from me. Meaning to say, so that he is also in that same steady state. So that's what Bhagavan was saying here. So you understood this verse number 30. If anybody of you have not, I'll stop here and I will explain to you. I do not mind. And always in the vision, I see, also take it in this. Your vision, you normally you see from another perspective. When you are in the literal object vision of when you see, you can see everybody in this world, but you cannot see yourself. Whatever you see in a mirror is only a reflected image. Truly, you cannot see yourself. Right? Even though you could zoom in, you can though you can have the absolute reality, but you cannot see yourself. You can see everybody else. But here, in from so from an absolute point of view, absolute point of view, you don't get lost for yourself, right? So that when it happens with that particular samadarshanam, that one he has realized and he has lost all that um, non-relative identities and that particular person, that yogi, Atma Samyama yogi, for him, that particular state. So Bhagavan says that I do not become an object of perception like anything else in the world because that 
Vishwara himself is here, is his identity. And that identity is, is the same Ishwara he sees everywhere. So in that Atma and Anatma, we need to say, that because it's all in the Vairagya Viveka state, there is Atma and Anatma. But once for a realized person, there is no Anatma, there is, the, everything is one Atma. There is no Anatma as well. Because Anatma is Maya. You understand? So that's what Bhagavan said. And that again he is doing it in the 31st shloka as Asi. So the 29th is a Tvampadarthaha, 30th is Tatpadarthaha, Padartham, and then 31st is a Asi Padartham. So we'll see that one. Sarvabhu Tastitam Yomaham Bajat Ekatva Mastitaha Sarvata Vartaman Opi Sayogi Mai Vartate Sarvabhu Tastitam Yomaham Bajat Ekatva Mastitaha Sarvata Vartaman Opi Sayogi Mai Vartate Again Bhagavan says that liberation which is basically out of the combination of that equal vision of the self and Brahman. Jiva Brahma Aikyam. And that is being more expounded here. So Bhagavan says, Yaha. Yo means Yaha, right? Yaha means what? Means whomsoever. Who is that? That liberated yogi. That Jivan Mukta is Yaha. Sarva Bhuta Stitam Maam. Sarva Bhuta Astitam. Sarva Bhuta Astitam means Maam. That Maam here means Bhagavan Vasudeva. That me, Bhagavan is saying to Yaha, that would liberate a person. Hmm? Ah, sees me. How, how does this sees me? Sarva Bhuta Astitam Maam. That one self Brahman Vasudeva abiding in all beings. Sarva Bhuta. Meaning to say all beings. Astitam which is present, satyam, all pervasive, that pure existence, sarva bhuta sthitam, maam, that Bhagavan or the Brahman here, maam, ah, uh, yekatvam, see here's the aikyam comes, here it means bhajati yekatvam asthita, that's broken here, six, word number six is bhajati, number four is yekatvam, number five is asthita, so here means ekatvam. In the ekatvam is where the aikyam comes. Ekatvam. That jiva and brahma is jivan and jan brahman. Jivan and the brahman is nothing but one. That ekatvam astitaha bhaje. Astitam. Ekatvam astitaha. Meaning to say, thus established. Here, Bhaje Bhajati means that possesses that absolute knowledge. Bhajati means do not think as the Kirtan here. Bhajati means that he has got that possessing that absolute knowledge. Okay. So, so Yaha Sarva Bhuta Stitam Maam Yekatum Mastitaha Bhajati. So it read again as Yaha that Atma Samyama Yogi Sarva Bhuta Stitam Maam One that is all pervasive in all the beings Maam Vasudeva Yekatvam Maastitaha As the only one existent factor Aastitaha Bhajati Yekatvam Maastitaha Bhajati That Aikyatvam That universal only one he sees or one he perceives is that Brahman. Nothing else he perceives in this world apart from that. Astitaha bhajati. That, that person, Saha. Here is Yaha, whomsoever. And then again he says, Saha. He is a yogi. What yogi? Atma Samyama yogi. A Jeevan Mukta yogi. And that yogi. Bhagavan Prashamsati, that he again praises him more. Sarvata Vartamanaha api. Sarvata, meaning to say Sarva Avastha. Sarva Avastha means in whatever state you could be. You could be the dreaming state, the sleeping state, is the, uh, or in the deep sleep state, or in any state you could be. 
And the sarvata also means sarva prakarahi. He could be engaged in any actions. Vartamanaha. Vartamana means execute. That he is living through that. Engaged. Vartamanaha. Api. Vartamanaha. Mai vartate. He is still engaged only in me. Even his engagement in the world or with anybody else, even the engagement is only with me, the Brahman. You understand? So that Jivan Muktaha and also this also says that the Jivan Mukta, even though when he is liberated, he is still existent because the Jivan Mukta, the once he has attained the Aikyatvam, it is not that immediately he loses the body and go because he remains. That is why the Guru Sishya Parampara exists. So the Jivan Muktas are remaining here in this world as great, uh, uh, um, great Gurus, great Sannyasis who are there and then they are again passing the knowledge from them to their sishyas to all their other people. So that is what Bhagavan again says here. Mai vartate, meaning to say that he is engaged, but the only one Brahman. And whatever that he will have a pratibandham, pratibandham means whatever the balance of life, that is immaterial, that he still lives, but it is only in my engagement that he remains up to the Jeevan Mukta to his last breath. And again, up to the last breath, that Atma Samyama Yogi, what Bhagavan says is, Atma upam yena sarvatra samam pasyati yorjuna sukham va yadi va dukham sa yogi paramo mataha. Once more, Atma upam yena sarvatra samam pasyati yorjuna sukham va yadi va dukham sa yogi paramo mataha. So the doubt can happen. What about his, his carrying the body, his breathing, his sleeping? He could also have some disease. You know, nobody is uh, exempted from this. What about that? Will he not have the pain? Will he not suffer that? What about all those things? You know, great, great Jeevan Muktas, like um, Ramakrishna Paramahamsa, he suffered in his last ages with uh, throat cancer. What about the Dukkam and Dukkam? Nothing affects them. That's what Bhagavan says. Whether he has Dukkam or Sukkam, that is only from your point of view, not from his point of view. So, again he says, Hey Arjuna, Yaha, Yaha, Sarvatra. <clears throat> Sarvatra. Meaning to say, Sarva Bhuteshu, in every, in every place, in every being, every uh, people, in everything existent in this world, Sarvatra, Atma Upam Yena. The, this word, you, you can, like how I told you in the other one, like, you know, the pran Pranashati, here also you can take is, Atma Upamanam Yena. Upama means, Upamanam, I think it's a very common word in um, Hindi. Upama, Upamanam means that it is a similarity, right? Right? We say this is like a simile, it's called Upama. Atma Upama Yena, meaning to say that he, he sees himself as the example in others. Isn't it that great, all the great Jeevan Mukta yogis think when another being gets hurt, he thinks, oh, it is hurting me. When the other being gets happy, okay, that is also the good thing for me. So that kind of a thing, Atma, that he sees even in anything that happens in this world, then what about his Dukkam? Nothing then. Tulyam. Because he feels the whole world sukham and dukham. And that does not affect him yet. Then what about his own self dukham? What is it going to matter to him? They are that kind of a jivan muktas. That's what he says. Atma upama, upama enam becomes atma upam enam. So their example, say, exemplification is all with the, themselves with the external world. See, I and you cannot feel the other's pain. Whatever treatment we go, we go. The person after that, you will say, oh, um, can you please tell me your pain from 1 to 10, Mr. Babu? How, what is your pain? 5, 4, 6, they can only give a number. Nobody can feel your pain. 
Only you have to feel. From your external reactions only they can. Right? But this person, not that he is literally, we need to say, but he, he, he is a person who feels that one. Feels that means because he has got that kind of a universal perception. Atma upam yena. Yadi va dukkam. Yadi va dukkam. If it is, you think it is a kind of a, a displeasure from the relative world, or yadi va sukam. Yadi va sukam, yadi va dukkam. If you think whatever it is a pleasure or a pain or a sorrow from, from the relative world of yan, but that yogi samam pasyati. In all of them, he still sees the equanimity. Equanimity in all of them. Because that's tulyam for him. This is all for himself. So what about for him? It is tulyam. Tulyam means equal vision in everything that happens. Samam Pashyati. And Krishna again, he says, sa, sa, Saha Yogi, that Yogi is the Paramo Mataha. He is the ultimate Yogi. My Mataha means that is my conviction. Whose conviction? Bhagavan says, which is my conviction. He is the ultimate Yogi Arjuna. One small story, if I tell you, you will probably understand this very easily. So Ramakrishna Paramsa in his last few days of, um, you know, throat cancer, he was not eating for not just days, months, not even one drop of water he had. And, uh, you know, the, his uh, disciples one day sitting next to him said, Thakur, we are feeling very bad. We are not able to eat. We have not eaten. How can we go home and eat? Our what can we put? At least for our sake, put something into the mouth. He said, okay, if you are all feeling that much of a pain because of vomiting, I will talk to Kali. Okay, wait, I'll talk to Kali. I will, you know, he is, he, he talks to Kali every now and then. He says, oh, Kali, and then he went into a trance. And when he comes, he's so much full of tears. So he said, what did Kali tell you, Thakur? He says, hey, you fool, I am feeding you through all this many mouths. You want this one mouth to feed you? So you understand, if you all eat, then I am full. So please go home and feed. Kali wants to feed me through all your mouth. It is only my mouth is gone, but no problem. See, that is the kind of a Parama Yogi. Just as an Practical example when I give you, you see. So they are Jeevan Mukta in that stage. For them, this normal, what we consume or what we do, nothing matters to them. And that's what Bhagavan says. Sayogi, Sahayogi, that yogi is a Paramo Mataha. Because even from the relative context or from an absolute context, these people, Jeevan Mukta, for them, nothing matters that we could attribute in the relative world. So when Krishna says and praises this particular Atma Samyama Yogi into that absolute, you know, from a relative context and from an absolute context as the greatest Yogi in his um, and then they are all the time, their existence is only Sarva Loka Hite Sarva Loka Hito Rataha If they are anywhere doing anything, it is only for the other's benefit so that particular version with the, with the absolute um, um, and is ahimsa vadi. So that's why they are the greatest sannyasis. So Arjuna watches. Now Arjuna has got his doubt. Because God, Krishna has gone into that highest epitome of that particular realized person. So Arjuna watches. Arjuna watches. Yoyam yogastvaya proktaha sam yena madhusudhanam so he is asking, Hey Krishna, hey Madhusudana, hey Madhusudana. Ah, and visualizing that Brahman in all beings. Hey Brahman. Samyena. Meaning to say Samadarshanena. In that equal vision that you are saying that equanimity. 
that tattvam pada darshana samyogam that that kind of advaita sakshatkaram hmm? as how see that's what bhagwan brings to the students context so arjuna is asking it's all looking nice to hear krishna but this samyena ayaha uh, ayam yogaha taya proktaha whatever you are saying this ayam yogaha this atma samyama yogaha taya proktaha by you that is now revealed to me he madhusudana this samyena by this equal vision of whatever you told me in the previous four five shlokas samyena yaha that particular um, factor of that equal equality ayam ayam yo ayam this particular yogaha this particular uh, atma samyama yogaha tvaya proktaha by you that is revealed to me tvaya proktaha has been revealed to me yetasya of that whatever you told me now he is revealing his doubts yetasya ha ah, aham na pashyami that i am not able to be, uh, even re uh, cognize one bit is very honest why because yetasya aham stiram sthiti says stira means nirantara meaning to say always continuously stira sthitim that state a continuous state of equal equality vision aham na pashyami sometime i can just visualize something you know like what i told you about the story of ramakrishna paramahamsa or great people yes it is possible see for us the concept is it is possible i have seen because this is very important even some of the concepts we we have, we have kind of seeing yes there are some people and it is possible by everybody i can see and but stiram sthitim continuously that it is possible sthitim i cannot see why chanchalatva because for me my mind is chanchalatva because it is our mind is always in a flux of motion how can this mind because he is really inquiring now more into himself not just from an other person my mind uh, you want me to control krishna even for one bit but i am not able to chanchalam chanchalam means it is always in a factor of a uh, uh, turbulent state but you are saying ever continuous state once you practice right that's what he says here he is taking all of them here yato yato nischarati that's at least you will say okay the time i'm sitting for meditation but bhagavan says this is a continuous state sada atmanam yogi vigata kalma shaka everything here so he says krishna how can that particular person be in a kind of a ever meditative state i am not able to even um uh visualize it aham na pashyami i am not even able to perceive how this kind of a continuous state of this one is possible because mind is not even able to see for a few minutes few seconds and moreover i'll my mind i will tell you more he says Uh, uh, hey Krishna, ah, uh, hey Krishna. I'll give you the meaning of Krishna here beautifully. Ah, uh, uh, Shankara gives, but first I will give you the context of the shlokas. Hey Krishna, he because indeed manaha chanchalam. The nature of mind is it's a chanchalam. It is ever in a flux, ever in motion. It is like a wind. That's what he says. Balavat dhidam, balavat dhidam pramati. Pramati means you know pramatana, meaning to say you know the in Tamil matam kadayal suraliya. Mari pramati means it is always it's you know it is even grinding. You know the mixi when you do it's all pramati. It's like just at least if it is just flowing some nice motion it's fine, but it is grinding me hard. Balavat balavat means it's forceful, full speed, full torque dhidam. pramati 
the mind is like this it's in a motion it's grinding me hard all the time here they are churning 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 all the time and that kind of a mind krishna tasya of that kind of a mind state that tasya ah aham tasya aham me tasya of that particular mind nigraham you tell me now to catch it you for me to restrain this mind you are telling me yato yato nischarati manas chanchalam astiram tatastato niyam etat you are telling me all this krishna but aham nigraham manye i want to do that but this fellow is is like a payo ho iva is like a wind iva sudushkaram dushkaram means what sorts of dushkaram karam means to do okay kar a karo is a kaam karo dushkaram means what very very difficult to do sudushkaram means very 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 difficult to do which one why it is like are you asking me to pack all this wind in this world to put it into a jar and keep it steady as well and you are telling me with all these things for me to put it in this mind yes i am nigraha manye i want to do that upayam brugi give me some uh, guidance yes i want to do it i'm not saying it's not possible for me because it's you bhagwan who is telling me so it must be possible i am certainly having faith in your teachings but this is the state i am ha ah, so krishna the the okay then krishna, then we'll come to bhagwan vacha before coming the krishna the word also is very very nice the krishna word has got two meanings one is krish means krish it comes from dhatu kal krish krish means that's why he is called you know the farmers they are called krishi right they you know they plow the land krishi that's so krishna what happens in two things is one is um bhakta jana papadi akarshanat meaning to say one is also another thing is called some melts one is bhagwan who has got that power to attract you krishna has got the power to attract everything one is that akrishnam is krishna another is this particular um, your mind whatever the papam punyam everything is that everything he melts it away in no time that is also another meaning of krishna one is he is the biggest magnet who attracts everything in this world another is whatever that is in our mind which is all this chanchalam is because of that reminiscence of that whatever the good bad everything right and that everything that he who melts it away so two meaning bhakta jana papadi dosha akarshanat krishna that's one meaning okay so then bhagavan vacha i'll come to the this is the most important shri bhagavan va so you got the arjuna's um, one that you know and also in this pramati balavadram i'll give you one more example you know we hear all those um, the, the the story what all of us must have heard like you know uh, the asuras and the devas go and churn the ocean then the nectar comes and there is some you know same thing that is all this purana what you hear is all what is actually happening in our mind it is the same math that you know um, they kim they brings the meru uh, and then they do the mathanam right and then when they churn the ocean what happened both good and bad came first the bad came before the nectar comes same thing for us when we go sit for meditation the bad one sometimes are you know just not saying for you anybody sometimes but that's what happens you see these are puranas that we take it and apply it in these kind of thing so when they did the pramatanam it is also called pramatanam that's say from the word i'm coming when they did the pramatanam of that ocean first what came was a big gas of poison they could not even stand they were running miles and miles away because it was people are just falling then shiva came and absorbed all of them as a nilakanta he just brought it so what happens then so take ishwara he says do not worry same thing as said krishna bhaktajana papadi akarshanat so he takes it 
and then you churn again more. Then you get the nectar. Then you get the nectar. And everything. And that is why it is, they did not say only the uh, devas, the deva, asura. So they both are the, the, our, our factors. So we use both of them, which is an inherent in everybody. So this Puranic concept, if you really put it also into a practice, yes, it does churn, but I'm not going to leave that effort. That's what Bhagavan says, that why, even though it is there, so Bhagavan says, Asam Shayam Mahabhaho Manodur Nidgraham Chalam Abhyase Natu Kaunteya Vairagye Nacha Grihyate Please, this particular sloka, if you can chant every day, Every day, at least the last one. Abhya Sena to Kaunte Vairagya and Chagrikati. Put your own name here. Abhya Sena to Babu Vairagya and Chagrikati. Abhya Sena to Devina Devina Vairagya and Chagrikati. Abhya Sena to Sumati Vairagya and Chagrikati. Abhya Sena to Krishna Kumar Vairagya and Chagrikati. Abhya Sena to Ganapati Ram Vairagya and Chagrikati. Put your own name and chant this as your own self mantra. So what Krishna says is, Asam, hey, um, uh, um, uh, Kaunteya, hey, Arjuna, Asam Shayam, one word, no doubt. We say no doubt, no, no doubt, Asam Shayam, no doubt, absolutely. You are right on the spot. Your doubt is very good, no doubt, no doubt. Manaha, Chalam, yes, Manaha, Chalam, I agree. I agree. Mind is, a, is always in a state of flux. It's in a state of motion. It is never steady. Yes, I understand. Manaha chalam. And not only that, it is durnigraham. I know it is very, very difficult. Very, very difficult to grihyam means to grasp or to pack it, to make it into a steady state. Durnigraham. Very, very difficult. I know that. But then there's one big, big one too. But Arjuna. Arjuna, two. Mahabaho. See how he says Mahabaho. One who has got the may, mighty arms. So that means he's also telling all of us. Hey Mahabaho Krishna Kumar. Hey Mahabaho Ganavatira. You know, hey Mahabaho Devina. You know what? How we can do? Abhyasena. Abhyasena. By proper practice. Abhyasena. But I'll give you more in Abhyasam from the Yogapatha. Abhyasena. And second factor, Vairagena. By Vairagya. By Abhyasam and by Vairagyam. Chagrikhyate. You will 100% be able to be able to uh, bring it into your control. So that means the two key words I have to understand more and more is what is this Abhyasam? Abhyasam we normally know as a practice. So that means, yes, the practice is what I am all doing. What is this practice, Abhyasam, for which Vairagyam is like that, you know, um, can I say, the protein shake. Ah, that's uh, These days, that's what makes right, right? So, yes, I want to do the pro practice and Vairagyam is like that protein shake, that which is going to give me, you know, that's what we all do, no? Whether you can lift five pounds or not, hey, have this, uh, oh God, they have, what all they have? Pre-gym drink, post-gym drink, and all those things, you know, posting. So we prepare everything. I go there and everybody is lifting 35, 40 kilos by his leg. I'm also trying, but you know, at least I've had the energy drink. I think I can do it, you know, something like that. But what Krishna says, we let's get to the context is that this Abhyasa, Abhyasa and Vairagyam, these both are very important to understand. And that's what I've sent you in WhatsApp today. Uh, and that I will go in the, I don't know if I can open that. Uh, to see if I can share it. It was not opening this WhatsApp. Oh, okay, it has opened it. Okay. The, Krishna has taken a lot of the words from Yoga Patanjali Yoga Sutra. Now, before I come to Vairagya, I will tell you the pra practice of Abhyasa. So Abhyasa, the practice what we have to see is two factors in Abhyasa. Practice of this particular Atma Samyama Yoga, 
This is the crux of this particular chapter. Because these are practical examples. There is one abhyasa of practicing. There's an inner practice and there's an external practice. And this is what Shankara Bhashyam also says. Abhyasa nama chitta bhumau kasyam chit samana pratyaya vrittihi chittasya. So practice is just nothing but one thing. Practice is just comes from a repetitive iteration of the same thought of a single object. And it is the mechanism for the control of mind, abhyasa vairagya. Okay, you can take it into two directions. That is what I'm saying here. One is outward through the sense organs, the one, one that goes. And that is again, the, and these factors cannot be a means of suppression or a forceful grasping. You can never ever do it. It is like the dog's tail, it will go again. For that only you need the vairagya. But I'm first thing with the practice. So it is a continuous practice. So the one that goes to the outward sense organs is what the vasanas we say. Because it has come from that reminiscence of the thoughts of so many janmas we have had. And that's where when it is going outward. Right? The minute I see this, the minute I hear this, the minute I smell this. And that's when the vairagyam that puts it into the, I will probably I'll do the vairagya. Okay, that's okay. So the vairagya is the one when the buddhi, which which puts the factor initially to say, look, don't go there before you experience that particular, because you're wise. Buddhi says, I don't want you to suffer and then realize because afterwards you may not be able to repair it. But before going there and falling there and uh, getting yourself destroyed, don't do this. Right. So that is the one that comes from the vairagya of the buddhi, intellect. And another one is inward. The inward is where the mind comes more. So when the mind is then drawn inwards to buddhi, instead of, because the mind is between the buddhi and the outside world. Very important. The mind is really the one between the buddhi and the outside world. But who is the boss of mind? Buddhi. How do I know? Go back to chapter 3. Krishna said, Indriyani paran yaguhu, Indriyabhyaf param manaha, manasas tu para buddhihi, yo buddhe para tastu saha. Indriyani, the sense organs, is ka boss hai kon? Indriyani mano buddhi. Indriyani ma, ma, manaha is the boss. Without the mental faculty to act, the thought, the buddhi, the uh, indriyas are useless. They will not be able to do anything. They have got no power. But manasas to para buddhi. Para, para means who is superior. Who is superior to mind? The buddhi. So I've got the chain of commands. I've got the organization tree well organized. And he has given the working mechanism. That means what? The buddhi is the boss. That is why I'm doing the study. That is why I'm spending this time. Because my investment is all in the buddhi, which is going to control the mind. And when the buddhi intellect, when that tells it, and that connection between the buddhi and the mind is a vairagya. That's what I want to give you the drawing. The connection between the mind and the buddhi is a vairagya. They are not too different. And the vairagya and the buddhi comes only from viveka. And the viveka comes from first the um, first you are to study like this what you are doing now, and that when really becomes concrete. Yes, I can understand. Yes, this is not doing good. I can do the vairagya comes, and the vairagya with the knowledge that you obtain through these kind of study and your self efforts, when that becomes ripened, that becomes a vairagya. And that is the abhyasa Bhagavan wants to go to do. Do the abhyasa with that vairagya. When it goes out, use this one. When it comes inside again, use the buddhi and vairagya. Okay. So that is what, if you also see in the, um, 
ಪತಂಜಲಿ ಯೋಗ ಸೂತ್ರ ದಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅಭ್ಯಾಸ ವೈರಾಗ್ಯಾಭ್ಯಾಂ ತನ್ ನಿರೋಧ ತತ್ರ ದೀರ್ಘಕಾಲ 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 ಸತ್ಕಾರ ಆಸೇವಿತೋ ದೃಢಭೂಮಿ ಇಟ್ ಟೇಕ್ಸ್ ಅ ಲಾಂಗ್ ಟೈಮ್ ದೀರ್ಘಕಾಲ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ when we come to the uh, vairagya so you got the link here so these particular ones are very helpful for you when we understand these ones and these pramanam is from the gita krishna's words and then when he calls about the vairagya vairagya can be divided into two para vairagya and apara vairagya para vairagya is the supreme vairagya the absolute and the apara vairagya is a relative where we are dwelling most at the moment is in the apara stage and the apara vairagya the relative and the apara vairagya consists of four kinds one is yatamana <clears throat> yatamana yata means itself meaning to say to do some effort yata mana meaning to say engaged in effort knowledge to be gained through scriptures and the teacher is essential and that particular thing to say yes i will practice that knowledge if this knowledge is just for only exhibiting for the knowledge of okay i have learnt all the gita i remember this that is not yata mana but when that knowledge is engaged in application then it becomes a yatamana buddhi so first the vairagya comes from the yatamana and then after the yatamana is a vyatireka see i have taken all these things from madhusudana saraswati who has who has got the gudartha deepika from geeta from there i got this one so vyatireka it's a logical discontinuance so this is when that self indica- your own analysis come in your own every one of you only we know in your mind why the sanchalam happens but the logical the discontinuance by the the logical determination yes i have now understood this one is a poison to me i i will engage but i will certainly have this particular vision in this particular one then there have been and there is and that by condition of discrimination this does not will give me happy i know this seems to be happy and a pleasure but on going it will not because i cannot be there always to kind of this it is only going to be a and so i will stand apart i will not put my mind too much engaged into this i will do my effort but i will not get my mind into getting afflicted by this it could be anything yes detachment yeah 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 so rajesh dwesha is what his relation right yeah that's right detachment yes exactly right detachment and once that yatireka comes from there then he says he goes to a ekendriya that centered in one organ so that one again this one the indriyas become into that chain of commands into the buddhi it says the mind now yes i will get quiet into you because i know you have now got conviction about this particular external object which is not going to give you pleasure or happiness but it is just a passage of time and that you are not going to get disturbed if should anything happen anywhere other otherwise that ekendriya happens and then the one think of the vashikaraha vashikaraha that once the vashikara the complete control of the edhir factors into the bind and when that vaishikara vairagya happens then he is able to he or she is able to do the savikalpa samadhi savikalpa samadhi is when that person sits in that samadhi he is able to he is able to grasp that one object krishna or that particular you know whatever the tattva or even you are thinking about it and that goes into a continuous practice and this abhyasa is what krishna wants him to do regularly with the vairagya and then once attains the para vairagya then he gets a nirvikalpa samadhi that is also called asampragnata samadhi 
But having said that, this Abhyasa and Vairagya is what Bhagavan says in this chapter in the context because this is about Adhyatma Samyama Yoga. So that is why Bhagavan, why I wanted to give you that, that is why Bhagavan says Asamyatatmana. Yatatmana. So A means negating. So Bhagavan says, Arjuna, if you don't do this Abhyasa and Vairagya, uh, and then do this practice, any amount of uh, effort you do is a waste. It's absolutely not going to take uh, anyone anywhere. So Bhagavan says, Asam yatatmana yogaha dushprapayiti me matihi vashyatmana tu yatata shakyo vaptu mapayataha. That's why I put vashikara uh, yoga, the last one. Four apara. So in these ones, if you have that extra reference, then he knows why Bhagavan has taken these words. Apara vairagya. So vairagya is what Bhagavan is again um, in detail in more. So asam yatatmana yogaha dushprapayiti me matihi vashyatmana tu yatata shakyo vaptu mapayataha. So Bhagavan says asam yatatmana ha. Asamyatatmana means one who has not even started that first step of yati, yata. So that's why yogis are called yatis, yati raj. Right? The word yati itself comes from that person who is doing that effort. In that, atma samyama yoga. So, asamyatatmana yoga ha tushprapa iti me matihi. If you are not even put this any effort into this, that yoga, atma samyam yoga, dushprapa. Dushprapa means it is very, very near, difficult, meaning to say, next to impossibility to get. Iti me matihi. That is my opinion. So Bhagavan's recommendation is start with that yatatmana. Without starting with yatatmana, it is never ever going to even achieve 1% for you. So, asamyata atmana ha, atmana, yoga ha, tushprapa yiti me matihi. But Arjuna, tu, pasya atmana, one who has got that vashikara of the mind, <clears throat> through the practice recommended in the scriptures and everything, vashya atmana, upayata ha, upayata ha means through this practice, abhyasa. Asyatmana tu upas abhyasa. Upayataha means from that abhyasa and vairagya. Both is upayam. Upayataha. Upayataha. Yatataha. Yatata. Yatata. Avaptum shakyaha. Meaning to say by the abhyasa and vairagya. Upat, um, avaptum. Avaptum means to obtain that shakyaha. 100% possible. So these are Krishna's words of guarantee. So that is why that Abhyasa and Vashyatmana, that Avairagya is the key word that I wanted to explain here more and more. And the second one is only 36. Bhagavan says, if these efforts are not made, absolutely no progress can be made whatsoever in the path of yoga. And that yogi could be yoga, could be everything, karma yoga, everything. And But in this chapter context is Atma Samyama Yoga. Okay, so with that, I will finish for today. Um, uh, just a small um, uh, um, uh, notification. Maybe the next two, two weeks, I may not be able to have class uh, because I just got some domestic commitments that I'm not able to um, continue. But I will see if I can do the week after next. But next week, certainly, I'm 